Let's think about a few cases of imaging inside the glass sphere. So let's see, we have a spherical surface, some radius, and I'll go ahead and just chop it off and only draw part of it. And remember we had our image out here, and it's at some, I'm sorry, our object out here. And it's at the object distance. That's really just the distance from the object to the front of the glass. And that ray is going to come and focus to a point where it'll ultimately create an image when it's a lens. And that's at the image distance, which is from this point to the front of the glass. Now you can kind of think of this as an origin, but keep in mind that it's by definition or by convention, the object distance is positive on the left of the glass and the image distance is positive on the right of the glass. So it's not really an origin where it goes plus and minus. So let's remember our um, equation for the sphere. It's N1. Remember this is N1 and this is N2. N1 over the object distance plus N2 over the image distance. Let me write this bigger. N1 over the object distance plus N2 over the image distance equals N2 minus N1 over um, R. Yeah, R. Okay. So this tells us basically the relationship between the object distance and the image distance. Because if you think about it, this is a constant, and N2 is a constant, and this whole thing is a constant. If I just have a sphere of glass, none of those are going to change, right? 1, 1 1.5, and the radius is however big the sphere is. So this just shows you the relationship between the object distance and the image distance. If I were to pull this back and make the object distance bigger, what would happen? Well, if this gets bigger, this term would get smaller. And uh, if this term gets smaller and this stays constant, this term has to get bigger. How does this term get bigger? SI has to be smaller. The image distance would have to be smaller. So if I pull this back, then the image distance is going to get smaller and pull back. And likewise, if I make the object distance smaller, if I push this forward, this gets smaller, this term gets bigger, this term's constant, so this term has to get smaller. How does it do it? By making the image distance bigger. So if I push this closer, the image distance goes farther back. So for this simple case, if you just pull it back and forth, this one also moves back and forth. But it's not a linear one-to-one -one mapping. It depends on, on this equation. So these bigger and smaller is referred to the object and image distance. So that is basically what happens. Let's look at a magic spot. So just like the hyperboloid, you could imagine a place that you go where um, we draw, I'll draw, uh, that's not good. You draw a couple of these and you say um, n1 over the object distance plus n2 over the image distance is n2 minus n1 over the radius. And you could say, what if um, I make this equal to this? Because I can pretty much make anything I want with this, right? I can make this infinity and drive this thing to zero by putting the object really far away, or I can make this uh, zero um, by, or I can make it infinity by putting the object really close, right, and make this really small, make it blow up to infinity, or I can make this zero by pulling the object really far away. Right? So I can do anything I want here, and this is just a constant, so I can definitely make these two equal. If I make these two equal, this term, entire term, has to equal zero, so SI has to equal infinity. So the point is, there is a magic spot where the rays will become unparallel, will end up parallel. And if I draw, draw a couple more, it doesn't matter the angle. See, we used angles in our derivation, but in our answer, the angle doesn't matter. It's just a property of where this is and where the object distance is. So if I make this equal this, then the only way it works is for the image distance to be at infinity, which is code word for parallel rays. 
So that's one way you could think about starting to make a lens. You could have curved here, and you could have curved on the other side. We know, of course, if you know about lenses, you know this is called the focal point. But we're not going to call it the focal point yet and calculate it because this isn't really how we do optics, right? We don't put our images inside glass. So, so we'll call it the focal point um, soon. We could do something. That was the magic spot. We could also do something weird. What if we put um, the object distance really close? Like this. Let's see. So here's our optical axis. And if we put the object right there, what's going to happen? N1 of the object plus N2 over the image equals N2 minus N1 over R equals some constant. Well, let's see. If we put this really close, we make a small object distance, which makes this really big. So this is going to be bigger than that. Right? This is just a constant. I can make that really big. And if this is bigger than that, then the only way it works is that this has to be negative. So the image distance has to be negative. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you do the ray tracing, you find that if we have these come, they don't quite even, not only do they not converge, they don't even become parallel. They just kind of, they change their angle, they fall to the normal, but they go kind of like that. So you can see no image is formed at all, not even at infinity. Right. So we have no what we would call a real image. However, if you were to stand over here and put your eye over here and look at these rays, what would you see? Well, you don't know the glass surface is there. You just see rays, and your brain just projects the rays back, or the optics of your eye projects the rays back in space, and then say, well, there must be some point source of light back here somewhere. You might get an image. It would look like there's an image in the back. This is a virtual image. A virtual image doesn't really exist. It's not an image. It's not a collection of light focused to points you can project on a plane. It's just one that you see if you trace rays back, but not where they really came from. Mathematically, you know it shows up when the image distance is negative. You have a negative SI. Because if this term had to be negative, well, we know N2 can't be negative. It has to be positive. So the only option is for the image distance to be negative, and that's basically what that means. Rather than getting an image over here, you get an image over here in the object space. But if that happens in this simple case, it's going to be a virtual image. It's not going to be real. So that's kind of three cases. When it's way out, you get a real image, you hit this magic point, and the rays focus parallel. And when you get really close, they just diverge. And you don't get an image at all. You just get a virtual image.